No. And when you see somebody else succeed, it, you really appreciate it. And it really does, you know, I, I feel that now. Whereas I think when I was much younger, it was really just about how can I make money? How can I do this? How can I get that for me? What's up, y'all? DeFoss back with another LT360 podcast, the first one of 2021. Uh, should be fun. I'm here with uh, Brian St. Louis, a, a very um, huge impact on my life in the last um, six years. Uh, it's been since I since I met Brian. So uh, I brought him on the show today. He is in the world of finance. He lives in uh, Rhode Island. So he is uh, working for Citizens Bank, one of the you know, well-known things up there in, in New England. And uh, he has also had his own business with MarketAmericaShop.com on the side uh, for going on eight years. So we have had a plethora of fun experiences. And um, I want to just bring all of that out into the, the world and uh, let him share his experience with that most of all. So um, Brian, you got the Providence Friars shirt on. Did they win today? Did the they did in overtime, and NCAA oh. hockey now is going into the NHL style where they go into three and three. Okay. In a shootout, and they actually won in the shootout. So, what? so that was cool. That yeah. was nice. Glad I'm glad we pushed it back, and you got to watch that. <laughs> yes, that actually worked out nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably uh, was a good thing we gave it ample time too, because I'm sure that didn't uh, fly by. It's a long game. Yes, for yeah. sure. <laughs> they're not having a great season so it was nice to see cool cool i um i from what i know uh, yeah because i watched the i watched the the basketball game uh, i want to say earlier this week maybe monday night and uh they're not allowed to play at the dunkin donuts center they have to play on campus in alumni hall so where is the hockey team playing their rink is on campus so they're they do have one on good campus. yep okay. That's interesting. It's so strange that the whole um, concept that they're making all NCAA teams play on campus. I mean, it makes sense. There's like no third party, uh, you know, um, place, right? So right. Dunk Donut Center isn't liable for anything, I guess, in that sense. Yeah, I mean, why, why buy out an arena when you can't have any fans, you know? Sure. Valid. I mean, the field house is basically free, right? Yeah. They're paying for that anyway. So I'm sure that's another piece of it too see and that's why he's a smart man he's the numbers guy that's what we refer to him <laughs> as. <laughs> he's so the numbers guy on the team yeah <laughs> so uh outside of that brian um paint a picture for kind of everybody um how you grew up kind of where um you grew up and how um you got into the world of finance and how you became kind of a, a numbers guy sure so uh, i grew up in vernon connecticut and uh, grew up on the family homestead. Used to be a big farm. Uh, my uh, grandparents had kind of sold off a lot of it, and uh, oh, then my that. yeah, my parents decided to um, buy the house when they were ready to move uh, move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, played just a lot of sports growing up. Um, never realized it, but my parents were entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, my dad owned a um, cable TV um, in, uh, installation company. Mm -hmm. uh, he did that for a while, and then he ended up going to work for one of the cable companies back then. Turned out to be Cox mm -hmm. over time. Good old Cox um, Communications. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, um, she did Amway for a little while back in the day. Um, I don't really, I barely remember that. I remember them having some white bottles in the house and things yeah. like that. And yeah. then uh, they ended up stop, stopping that. And uh, she helped my dad out as like the office manager. And then um, she started working at a bank branch once the kids were old enough to be home alone. Okay. Back and when you're, were, you're one of how many kids? Two, just two of us. So my sister's four years older. Okay. And... Um, yeah, that back in the day when it was banker's hours. So she worked nine to three, and then then they brought on Saturdays. That was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wanted that. What, yeah, and then they're like, what do, what do we do with the kids on Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
so then um, for me, I went to college for meteorology because math was my only good subject. It was the only one I kind of liked. And so I took one of those aptitude, I don't know if it was an aptitude test or a, you know, what do you like kind of test with our guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, either meteorology or physical therapy. And interesting. Yeah, I knew the physical therapy. The yeah, stuff. right. <laughs> I knew physical therapy came up because my sister was going to school for that. Okay. So I knew that in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, okay, I guess I could do that. Mm -hmm. um, and when she said meteorology, I said, what's that? <laughs> That's <laughs> no, how great I, I was, like how much I love school. I had no clue. <laughs> she said well it's studying the weather i'm like i love the weather <laughs> so i went to plymouth state for meteorology uh -huh. and skiing those are two reasons i went <laughs> that's cool i did not know that that's so funny yeah. well, i knew you i knew you had went to school for meteorology but i didn't know the how it kind of came about situation yeah i was probably one of the most like lost kids when we got there in the freshman class you, like mm -hmm. you know all the meteorology students it's not a huge yeah. program <laughs> and they were all gung-ho like science driven and mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i've never done anything outside of apply to the school for meteorology <laughs> yeah that's so funny so so um, interesting and then what was so what would you say uh you came out of school with like what it how did that go for you general education mm -hmm. like life education living there having to figure out how to do laundry mm -hmm. <laughs> how to figure out not to get in trouble yeah. you know <laughs> and come home at a reasonable hour and learn to study i because i didn't study in high school i just mm -hmm. thankfully i had enough talent to get by mm -hmm. without putting a lot of effort in in high school yeah. but when i got to college that was different <laughs> so that's kind of how that's kind of how i had to go about it uh the idea that like we had to learn how to be good students in a sense right yeah that's kind of how i had to be and i can definitely thank some people for teaching me how to study some of my <laughs> uh my roommates really taught me what studying was like nice thank you. <laughs> and then um uh, i mean so I, you get a math minor when you take meteorology it's okay. just you have there's so much math in it that it, it you naturally get it and um, math in what sense in the, in the way of kind of predicting, um, where s storms and, 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 uh, the path of kind of like cold fronts and, and stuff like that. Is that, yeah. So the, the main thing is it's all formula based on where storms, when storms will develop. Okay. Uh, and then parts of that are where they'll go, but it's really about what are the what's the chance a storm's gonna develop mm. whether that's a tornado whether mm. that's a hurricane whether it's just a cold front it's mm -hmm. all formulas so that explains your love for excel and your yes absolute <laughs> absolute mastery of excel spreadsheets the funny thing is i struggle uh, so my son is learning his math facts so it goes up to 12 12 times 12 yeah yeah i struggle <laughs> it's not in excel in a formula <laughs> no, not in your brain i know 12 and 12 was 144 that's uh don't ask me any other ones 12 and 10 120 <laughs> um, yeah uh <laughs> that's funny so you ended up uh graduating from plymouth state four years you did yep. normal yep. and then where did that take you did you go back so, to Connecticut? Yeah, I, I went back to Connecticut. I didn't have an exact job coming out of school. Um, mm -hmm. Had some interviews lined up. And uh, my fiance at the time was living in Providence because she was going to PC. So it's, okay. we met in such South Windsor, Connecticut, right next door, next town over. Mm -hmm. And um, then she was going to PC one year behind me. So um yeah, I was just looking for jobs and I got a couple offers in Pennsylvania and Northern Massachusetts. And I didn't want to work 20, like, you know, the 24 seven shifts, like rotating yeah. holidays, uh, very probably short minded at the time. Uh, Cause Marissa was going to be a teacher. 
So I knew she was going to have summers off, holidays off, weekends off. You're like, I don't want to not be there all that yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I, I say short minded because I just look at my career and I realize I'm a pretty hard worker. And I probably would have gotten out of that rotating stuff relatively mm -hmm. quickly because they weren't television jobs. They were behind the scenes. I was, so that's what I was going to say. I was like, you're not necessarily like the uh, hop on the news, you know, and here's your weather for today. <laughs> that's not necessarily you. So those are the people that get made fun of all the time. I yeah. want to be behind the scenes. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. So I just decided not to take one of those positions. And mm -hmm. so that sort of ended that career. And then that's when you got into financing? Not exactly. I, I found a job recruiting. You and Michelle were doing that? Yeah, in Providence. Okay. And uh, I was an internet recruiter. So Monster, do you remember that? Yes. Website? Yeah. And gosh, what was the other one? There was another big one. Those were the two big ones. Okay. I spent all day searching for resumes on monster.com for technology jobs because the, there was the big boom going on. So mm -hmm. um, then when that boom busted and I wasn't getting anyone a job, they let me go, which gotcha. made complete sense. When they pulled me in the office, I was like, I've been oh, waiting geez. for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to happen last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at that point, I just looked for a random job and found a collections job at Chrysler Financial in Massachusetts and took that as a temp job and then got hired at Citizens after uh, that temp job. Crazy. So many things that I had no idea. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> all kind of random, but I had done collections before because during college, I actually collected for a garbage company, which is the easiest type of collections. Yeah, I was going to say. Don't pick up a, if, if a restaurant doesn't pay and you shut off their service for a weekend, yeah, they, they find get it. One. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one wants their trash piling up in the back of the restaurant for yes. weeks on end. That's right. funny. And then, uh, so you got into Citizens, but what sparked um, the, the entrepreneurial kind of, ignition because like you you've always talked about you know you knew you wanted to do something um and you were looking pretty actively uh right in a sense um and then it randomly just kind of came across you through leah right yes actually a, di a different one oh. yeah sorry That's leah you yeah you talked to leah got it mixed up yeah <laughs> yeah so in college, I knew I needed to be a business owner because golfing, I would golf yes. Tuesday afternoon after class. And the only people there were retired people and business owners. Mm -hmm. And most of the retired people who could afford to play were retired business owners. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that told me I needed to own my own business. I just had no idea what that was going to be. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not that creative i don't think uh, usually if i come up with an idea i turn on the tv and i go oh that was the commercial i saw yesterday <laughs> oh, all right they already have that it wasn't me yeah yeah <laughs> um i've and i now that things are clicking in my head um probably a little slow from the drinks i had last night but uh other than that the story you always tell is the one of you know, you played golf and you would always see who was golfing, who was golfing, who was golfing. Yep. And that led you down that road of like, okay, it's not a mystery that if you want to be financially fit, you have to, you have to own some sort of business. You have to create leverage, right? Exactly. Leverage, time freedom. That was the, the big thing. Um, I didn't really think of it as financial freedom. I thought of it as time freedom. If I want to be able to go and do whatever I want, when I want, then I've got to have money coming from somewhere else yeah. without me being there. So, yeah. So the um, idea to circle back of your parents kind of being entrepreneurs in, them, in, in, in their own right, then what, what skills do you think you got from them or what, what do you think kind of carried over? Did they ever teach you anything, anything like that? 
no, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, I honestly, I don't think so. Um, I was pretty young when they had the business. Okay. Um, I was probably eight, maybe younger. I, mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly. And, and I Whereas was thinking about sister, this. Your sister was a little older, so maybe she was a little bit more involved. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I went on some jobs with my dad every once in a while, but, I, you know, I couldn't climb a telephone pole or, you know, touch, you know, cable wires. So I really just was sitting there. Um, if it was me, I would have tried. I would have <laughs> been up there in a second. You know that. <laughs> so I, I was thinking about this when, when we mentioned talking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it kind of just hit me this year that my dad was an entrepreneur and business person. My mom ran the business and we've never really talked how to run a business or anything. <laughs> That's and, so you know, I, I think part of it is it wasn't as successful as they wanted. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know if they don't believe they know it as well as maybe they do. Not confident. In, yeah. In and quite frankly, glory days. I don't ask. Mm -hmm. I'll be, I mean, I also don't go looking for that yeah. advice sometimes when I should. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Now, what uh, what are things that you wish you did maybe learn um, if you could go back or you could uh, kind of looking at what it does take? What, what are things that you can kind of point out? Yeah, I think the I mean, I am not risky that that's how I ended up mm -hmm. partly not starting my own business around maybe even if it was just construction. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know. I could probably do that pretty handy. My dad's very handy, you know, probably could have just gone off on my own, gotten some jobs and kind of started my own business. Like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm so risk adverse and that that scares the crap out of me, to be honest. Play the safe card. Right? Yeah. So, you know, maybe, maybe uh, learning a little different way, maybe to handle my money earlier on mm -hmm. to, to have a, feel comfortable that like I have this set aside, I could start something and if it doesn't work, figure something you're, else out. You're still you know? good. I've I, been reading, um, sorry to cut you off. I've been reading oh, okay. the, the Dave uh, Ramsey total money makeover book. Um, and uh, coincidentally enough, my grandmother uh, got me that book oh. um, two years ago for my birthday. And um, I've been reading it every night i'm i'm not like the sit down and read for hours kind of person i just keep it by my bedside and every night i open it up i spend five ten minutes depending on how fast my eyes close and i go to sleep <laughs> uh, <nice>. yeah <laughs> it's a great tool if anyone needs to help you know help fall asleep faster just put a book in front of your face i'm sure it'll help um the idea of uh you know, just practicality and in, in how he goes about it. I don't know if you've read that book, but um, super simple. He talks about, you know, how to make the money work for you and how to just slowly, um, you know, and, and efficiently pay off your debts, um, set money aside for um, emergencies and, you know, then build that up to have, you know, maybe six to eight months of living expenses. So if you were to go eight months without completely, you'd have these things. Um, all very basic practical stuff, but to your point, you had parents that were in, you know, the business and in the world of that stuff, and they and you didn't even learn. Never mind did the school system, you know, kind of teach us that, right? Um, which is is super interesting to me still. Um, but it plays out into the fact that now you you're you stepped into the business because most likely it's a system right is that kind of where you were going yeah absolutely there was two things i was looking for when i really started looking um and it was a franchise or something i knew would work and mm -hmm. so i was also considering um building a sports facility um, you're gonna, so you're gonna with soccer. compete with teamwork, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like um, I want to play soccer on my own time, on my own money. Right. I'm just gonna. <laughs> and funny. I can run it way better than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, I I I know at Teamworks there was people traveling like 
30, like 40 minutes to come play. And you know, Rhode Island, nobody wants to travel 40 minutes <laughs> for an hour. That might, as, that might as well be, you know, a country away. Yeah. And they were building, um, there's all the old industrial buildings down in Quonset. Oh, yeah. And they were building a new highway to get there. And it's like, wow, that'd be a great spot. I could probably use something that's already there. Started talking to a friend that was going to, you know, kind of join me on the journey started talking to some consultants to help fundraise and all that. And they, they wanted 30,000 up front. Wow. And you're like, <laughs> like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, so where do people get 30,000 to do this? Like usually family or friends. I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't know people like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't have those types of friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I kind of ditched it there mm -hmm. and, uh, again, start, kind of eyeballing franchises but then that's when i ran into market america so mm -hmm. went that direction um what are, what do you think are the downsides um of franchising because you and what ones were you looking at i mean i looked at subway because okay. i liked eating there at the time <laughs> <laughs> hey that's a smart play that's a smart yeah. play. um and then the other ones i i can't remember i i maybe considered like a batteries plus or something real basic and small. Mm -hmm. And I just saw the income coming from one of those franchises and thought that that's not what I want to make. Mm -hmm. You know, it was small. I was surprised. Yeah. And it's not as a uh, glory based as you would think. Yeah. So that was, so the problem with, I guess the negative franchising, mm -hmm. just the cost. I up mean, front especially yeah you know i don't remember what the costs are now i haven't really looked into it recently but you know either hundreds of thousands you need to have in free cash flow not not alone you just need to have that cash ready for whatever it's going to take and i mean that's just hard to get for the average person and that hundred thousand isn't that wasn't just subway i'm sure theirs was probably higher even at the time so yeah you know the entrance into the market is just it's tough mm -hmm. it's not um not the average person can start it no um, and then it takes a lot of time a ton of time to get it squared away and to hire people that are going to be working for you and do you trust them and um if you don't if you're if you're a micromanager, then you better be there, and then you where's your time freedom, right? Exactly. So that was the other thing. I I wasn't gonna quit my good paying, comfortable job at Citizens, mm -hmm. where I'm in middle management. Especially back then, it, it was definitely hey, I maybe if there's a round of layoffs, I'm I'm on the block. Mm -hmm. But it was still uh, too much to just you know quit that and you know start even a smaller franchise that then you know what your annual i guess salary out of that would have been actually like peanuts it, really yeah it's one i could afford if i went and did a smaller one that i could afford mm -hmm. then i probably wouldn't be making very much which kind of makes sense right it, it, you're gonna pay less to get into one that it's gonna that, return less, it's, not, right? it's not gonna yeah pay you back as much and go live you know work there the entire time it's open like you said without a staff mm -hmm. and then my time freedom is my kids spending the whole time in that shop mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want that yeah that didn't quite sit well either <laughs> i can't lie though if i you know came into subway and you were making my sandwich it'd be a good day <laughs> <laughs> um so now um what what was the story specifically of you running into market america and yeah, that opportunity so i always talk to a, a good friend of ours about our jobs she was in corporate also and mm -hmm. career and you know she knew i was looking for a business i never realized she was looking for something like that either uh, and but she showed me the shop.com site i shopped on it a little bit and it didn't dawn on me that she owned it like, I, I guess I thought she just, it was free or something. Like, I, yeah, I you know, 
And uh, so I shopped through her site and I was like, I really like this site. This makes a lot of sense. The cash back, it, like why go to Amazon? I was shopping at Amazon. But I'm like, why am I going to go to Amazon? They don't pay me. Mm -hmm. com does. Mm -hmm. And so she asked me to come take a look at the business side of it because really she said, tell me why I should run before I get too involved. I said, okay, well, I've never had a problem giving you my opinion. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll take a look. Yeah. And uh, so she invited me to a meeting. I was tired from the day. I really wanted to cancel, but I said, no, I can't do that to Amy. That's mm -hmm. not cool. So I went and uh, I just decided to learn more. Crazy. Happened just like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you were pretty much like, well, if, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. So get out of my way. Yeah. Yep. So, um, the one thing when I looked, I, you know, contemplated for about a, a month uh, okay. before a lot, making, less, a lot less time than I took. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I was a little further along in my life than you were too. That's, that's valid. <laughs> yeah. That's valid. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, a little premature. I was a little young. Yeah. I, I mean, that's you, uh, I wish I had that mindset mm. 10 years earlier than I, I did. Uh, <laughs> I had a little too much fun when I was younger and that was, that was my goal. Well, um, that's the crazy part is you guys, as soon as I, you know, it was, it was pretty much Aaron, right? Aaron and Biz um, showing me the site. And, uh, you know, I went to that first meeting in Providence and I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, is you know, a lot of concepts and I had done, um, Cutco. I don't know okay. if you yeah. that. So I had done Cutco, uh, before that. And, uh, that was just something that I was doing before I went to college. That was the summer in between high school and college. And, um, I ended up stopping when I went to school. And if I hadn't, I would have been very successful because someone that I brought on ended up selling, like an absolute maniac and then she ended up running and opening other uh um, like other stores um and cutco oh. offices and then she was managing the new england region and i was like what the <laughs> that could have been, been right yeah <laughs> that could have been the <laughs> one <laughs> um but long story short it was uh it was work or don't make any money in it was like eighteen dollars to show somebody. It was commissions if you sold. Um, so um, crappy from a commission standpoint, from a payment standpoint. Um, and then it just kind of put me in the mindset of like, oh, I can do things on my own. Blah blah blah. It's I never had you know the whole idea of like someone showing me the ropes with financial things and anything like that. But the more I went and talked to you guys, the, like you guys completely took my brain and just kind of ran with it in terms of like, what books are you reading? And what's your vision board? And um, where do you want to be in five years? What's the, you know, number one thing that you really, really want to take a risk on? Um, and then just the idea of like how money actually works you guys completely blew that up for me. So I, I don't even think I really had the mindset going in. I went to the meeting not knowing what was really going to happen. Yeah. And then I credit you, Michelle, Aaron, um, Sam, Amanda, um, who else? There was like a, a solid like five or six of you that really like gave me a lot of attention when I was first coming on um, and that elevated and took off for me more than anything. Nice. And it, I think it's, it's good to mention it's like support attention. Yeah. Not, of course. not suffering, not like uh, no. suffocating. No, no, no. It was, it was in the best way. It was absolutely in the best way. Um, Cause at the time I was still in, I was away in Massachusetts. Right. Right. So um, it was, I think the first meeting I went to was like a week before the semester started. It was during the summer. So I was there for one. Then it took me <laughs> eight months of like <laughs> yeah. trying to figure out what, what, uh, 
what my game plan was if if I would hop on the train of um, you know joining and starting yeah. my own business. So. It made sense. I mean, it's a good thing you didn't have that total Rhode Islander mentality of not driving for more than 20 minutes because I know. <laughs> you never would have met up with us because we didn't have Zoom. Never. I know. You would you would have been like, oh, I'll, I'll come back in the summer when I'm back in Rhode Island. Yeah. But you'd it never would have happened. You'd show mm-hmm. up when you had time and drive the 40 or 50 minutes from school. Mm-hmm. So Through a lot of snowstorms, I drove too. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was the year that I, I didn't end up playing basketball. Um, so my whole winter, um, I, I worked as soon as I got back to school um, in the semester, I went and looked for a job um, when I didn't make the basketball team. So I was working and I was like, this sucks. I don't want to do, <laughs> I don't do this. Um, so yeah, I was, I was open-minded for sure for a lot of different reasons. But, um, so in terms of the, you know, the things that stuck out to me, I've, I've talked about, but what really stuck out for you um, when you first sat down with your friend and she showed you, or you went to that first meeting? Yeah. Um, that it wasn't all me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, creating the leverage, mm-hmm. right? That That's a big part of it. I could see that I could create that leverage with, you know, helping others and getting to benefit from that. Mm-hmm. But also that it, it was also from the senior business partners of ours that started before us, we could benefit from them as well. Yeah. So it wasn't me exploiting people. It, you know, it was, there's so much stuff to buy. It, it's not like one thing that you just have to repetitively buy that maybe mm-hmm. could go out of style or you don't want. Yeah. Um, but it was well, really, you don't use it that fast. And just yeah, it, it just, it wasn't all me. That, that was I mean, a big thing because I told you, not really. I've not risky. never been a business. Clearly, I didn't have the confidence in myself to just jump out and start a business. Because mm-hmm. if I did, I probably would have. Yeah. You know, so knowing I, I could work with some other successful people and find the right people to help, that was big. Yeah. I, you can only eat so many Subway sandwiches, right? So you can only fuel your income that way so, so many times a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um and that's that the funny part of like you know you said i would i was thinking about opening one of those because i like the sandwiches um when when people um in, invest in anything and they're they're they don't believe in it or they're not a fan of it it's, it's so mind-boggling to me um and that's one thing that the, we've always talked about it's like if, if you're gonna put your time or your money into anything it should be something that is usable is tangible it's valuable um and it's not going to uh you know not have any other place in your life right. uh right so i mean for example uh putting your money into stocks you know and you don't know what the company is or you don't like the company or you don't drink their drinks like i'm not gonna buy starbucks I've, i don't go to starbucks I'm, it doesn't make sense for me i bought southwest and jet blue because i've I like, I like flying on Southwest and JetBlue. <laughs> um, and uh, that's a whole nother story in terms of, um, you know, that's, that's the thing people are talking about right now is how to create wealth, put your money in the stock market. Oh, it's low. Let's blow it up and put all your money in. In terms of uh, risk, where do you, uh, where do you have your mindset on, stock market and, and creating financial I, freedom there. I like the stock market yeah. it, it generally goes up yeah so even if you're buying what you consider high mm-hmm. you, it may go down a little bit but it's going to go up play the long game right yeah absolutely and it's 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 the long game and it's got to be money that you're willing to lose mm-hmm. for the most part um I, I've starting to move a little more of my 401k into a managed stock market account. Um, but if I had concerns, I could easily move that back into a 401k, which would be a little bit mm-hmm. safer. Yeah. Um, and I'm more educated now on it, but I have my play money in the stock market. And funny, you mentioned the, the companies you like, 
Mm. One of the first companies I ever bought was Nike because I liked Nike. Yeah. Um, Sam Adams because mm-hmm. I drank a lot of Sam Adams and yeah. that's done me very well in the stock market recently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I bought United Healthcare because my father-in-law had worked there and told me how well that stock had done for him. And so wow. those are my first three stocks, I think. And I didn't do that until I was in my tw- late twenties, probably. Mm. So, yeah. I, I, it wasn't I, a lot of my wealth at the time. It was just <laughs> some extra money I have. I'll do that. I'll give it a shot. Here's an extra uh, fifteen dollars for uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, the pandemic really kind of opened up the stock market for me. I, I wasn't um, I wasn't putting any money into it uh, prior to March, um, and then I started doing that. But um, like I said, I I stayed out of it for so long with the intent of like, well, I don't have necessarily like st- stuff to spare um so i'm just going to continue to invest in and buy things on a day-to-day basis that will pay me in return right shopping annuity um mindset and it was like well my money goes out there into the stock market i i don't really get anything in return for that whereas if i'm buying a product that i need i'm going to use and that was always my mindset. So then when I finally did start putting money in, it was the mindset of, well, if I can't help that stock go up, or if I don't want to help that stock go up from a consumer standpoint, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. I generally buy things that, you know, I like personally, um, and could see having a, a future, you know, I, I have like a semiconductor company. I, I might be using their semiconductors. I don't know, but <laughs> you know, got some recommendations that it was a good buy. So you know, and it's done okay for me. So I, because I, you know, you got to mix it up, right? Yeah, you want to have a so diversity that, in your portfolio. I think the big thing that generally people need to pay attention to in the market is, or at least be aware of it. You you haven't lost anything mm-hmm. it, until you sell it. You haven't lost anything. So if that it goes does. down, so what? Yeah, you know, you, you, I do watch it every single day, which is not really good normally. But for me, like, it's it's the numbers. I like seeing what's it doing, how's it going. But it doesn't panic me. That's the big thing. Yeah, it's like weighing yourself every day, right? You yeah. talk about that. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Speaking of that, Brian, have you? Uh... <laughs> don't. I'm so dead. <laughs> <laughs> have you been uh watching your uh intake of of food as of late have you done any uh, detoxes or anything I, i've been watching it <laughs> it's watching it good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not healthy uh that's funny um no. uh, so for you guys it. watching i um i've had the pleasure of of uh helping and, and working with brian um nutritionally through tls and uh, through shop.com and, and everything that we have to offer on that side. So he's been a, a great uh, facilitator of uh, 21 day challenges. And uh, how about this? Have you, t- have you taken any cold showers in, uh, in honor of me lately? I did accidentally. <laughs> where was I? At uh, Christmas Eve at my in-laws. Okay. The hot not, water not tank ran out of hot water in the middle of my shower. So <laughs> I thought of yeah, you. You survived. I survived. Yeah. See, if that was the first time you had ever done it or had to go through it, you probably would have been in much worse uh, yes. condition. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I remember the first time, I think we were in the Miami house, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're like, what? You take cold sh-. <laughs> for the thing the whole week, the whole week we were down here. I know. And I've heard more and more about it. And I still think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I took, uh, before um, we, uh, this early this afternoon, we, uh, I always end with cold shower. So I'll start, I'll take regular, you know, take my shower, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, regardless, I always turn it on cold and do a little breathing, calm myself down, make sure the cold water doesn't panic me. And then uh, I hop out from there. When you told me that part that you you end with it, I yeah. said, "Okay, 
that's yeah. not quite as crazy. I mm-hmm. thought you just jump in first thing in the morning, ice cold shower. <laughs> I'm a I'm a shower at night guy. Uh, I like to shower right before I go to sleep, um, and I wake up ready to go. You go. That's, yeah. that's how I that's how I operate. But everyone's got their own thing. Everyone's right. One thing. Um, and you'll think this is crazy. I'm gonna do another five day fast um, to, <laughs> to okay. start at, at some point in January. So good for that, you. Good yeah, that should you. be interesting. Should be interesting. So funny. Now, in terms of you know that kind of where I was going to get back on track. Um, there's there's so much else. Uh, that the company offers so what other um what other things have you kind of learned as a result um besides maybe just the business aspect of it uh so light like just learn from so many different people about how to be a good person that's probably really what you know uh first and foremost i I definitely I've been, I think, pretty self-centered in the past. Mm. And in this company, you can't be. No. And when you see somebody else succeed, it, you really appreciate it. And it really does, you know, I, I feel that now. Whereas I think when I was much younger, it was really just about how can I make money? How can I do this? How can I get that for me? Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that, may, and maybe I've just matured. But uh, I think that's something I've learned. And I probably learned it from the people we hear speak all the time, right? You see Valid. people who don't need to be spending time with us because mm-hmm. they just don't need to be. They're set. But they do. Plenty, plenty of income rolling in for them. They don't have to do it. Yeah. Exactly. And so seeing people do that, I think that probably just starts to, to kind of get into you, you know? Yeah. Undoubtedly, I mean, that's, um, that's kind of my first thing. Whenever we talk with anybody, I always say like the people, um, and, and the amount of perspective, uh, on life that you can let alone making money business, just the network of people and the way that, uh, they kind of go about day-to-day life from a, a, a moral compass standpoint is, that's life so been life changing, uh, undoubtedly. Um, yep, for sure. <clears throat> and then, the like, yeah, go for I'll it. Say, I mean, health. Yeah. I've learned a lot about my health and like how to maintain it. You know what? You know what I learned from you. This is, this is al. Yeah, this is a little two ounces of aloe yeah. with, with my eight <laughs> ounces of water. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I um. It and quite frankly, I don't always. I'm not the best behaved at it. It's yeah. not my thing. Like you and I have talked, it, you are very passionate about what goes into your body, how the body functions, how, you know, like you love that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that if I eat like crap and put bad stuff in me, it's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. I understand like crap kind of feel like crap. Yeah. I just, I used to think stuff that's actually not good was good. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't know anything. Now I know it, and it's just a matter of making that decision to do it and still consume it. Yeah. And when you know, when we when I say you know I've been bad, it's it's still way better than I was mm-hmm. before I understood this stuff. It's just yeah. it's bad for a lot of the people that I talk to, like you. <laughs> <laughs> In comparison, everything In is comparison. relative, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, but that's why we don't compare to each other. We compare to your our, your oldest or your, your prior self, right? Right. Um, and I mean, like, when we go on our trips, like, you're eating, you're making good choices. We go out to eat, you make a good choice. Um, but like you always say, you, I, I enjoy my beer. I enjoy, you know, a little treat sometimes. I'm not going to, you know, shy away. And that's completely fine. It's just a matter of uh, not judging yourself for it and not feeling like, okay, now I'm in the the ditch and I'm just going to stay here until uh, I decide to crawl out at some point and try to get back on the horse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> that's the, the one thing I always teach. Um, now outside of just eating, 
you're you've also gotten uh quite knowledgeable on like what's going on you know out what are you putting in like outside your body right or on your body on your skin hair all of that stuff you don't you don't get a, a beautiful goatee like that without taking care of it <laughs> <laughs> the white though the white yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't figured out anything to stop that besides the eye. Uh, I think uh, I think the faster it goes all white, I think the better it'll it'll be. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean the I always put lotion on my face just because it gets dry and that feels weird. Did that for a while, especially in New England. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know that's been going on for years, but now I through our company we have great products for that. Um, one thing that always drove me nuts and sorry for anyone listening, but bags under your eye, like mm. it can age you so much or even if it's not just bags, but like the darkness. Yes. Yeah. Dark rings. So we actually have a product for that. And so I've been using that and I, I believe it helps. And I feel like it would be a lot worse if I was, didn't keep using it. <laughs> that's, that's my one like cosmetic tip. Thing is your, uh, your little under the eye. Yeah. What uh? What product is that? The um cellular laboratories, the eye cream. Lumiere de Vie. It's Lumiere. Uh, eye bomb. Gotcha. Gotcha. They're just we, the, we have the Holmes version. I just haven't. I still have the old uh, stuff at the house, so I haven't switched over yet. They're uh, speaking of that. They're uh, discontinuing um the shopping annuity shaving cream, I believe. Ah. The charcoal one. I didn't catch that. Yeah, so I think it's just going to be the Lumiere de Vie Ohms one that we have, um, the shaving the shaving cream for that. Okay. Which, by the way, that do you use that uh, aloe aftershave? I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is life-changing. Yeah. That's, like, my favorite part about shaving is just uh, getting to put that on my face afterwards. It wakes me up. Smells really good. It's uh, such a good product. That's and you can... Cool. You don't have to just put it on your face too, right? Like it's, it's a aloe hydrating cream. You can kind of put it anywhere. I convinced my son to start using it because he's starting to get outside a lot. He's getting mm -hmm. checked cheeks, mm -hmm. put on the DNA miracles. It's a little bit more oily. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't like that feeling, not giving in cellular labs yet. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like wrinkle <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Happening. And so, um, anything with a perfume hurts when you have chat right yeah so got the aloe cream going on them now and likes that smart smart see things that you just kind of pick up uh just from going to conferences and being around and having all the females on the team that i'm talking yeah, right. about it, right <laughs> yep uh do you use the the ph uh spritzer yep love that I, one yeah i still remember um i think it was gail I think it was Gail that showed me that trick. She. This isn't North recorded, North. is it? What'd you say? This isn't recorded, is it? My skincare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man! Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, all the tricks of the trade uh, that you just kind of pick up on, and then um, the people as well. Uh, so like, our team is so. Most, most teams are so dense in like uh, geographic location. And I feel like ours is so everywhere and sporadic. Um, that in and of itself, it, you know, brings different perspective and you get to learn from, you know, people, different areas. Um, and then I moved down here and, and that was just separated me from everything, but uh, it brought me closer to Miami. So that's always been the good, the good yeah the good part about it um speaking of which uh it's not in miami this year oh and virtual oh. again it is virtual again yep yep they announced that a couple days ago really so no vegas no vegas what <laughs> oh man yeah i didn't know that you just broke my heart brian live sorry buddy on the recording <laughs> I was so excited. I was talking about it yesterday. Yeah, that was bad timing to start talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I'm going to pretend like it's still going on. Maybe I'll travel out there and go see my buddy in L.A. or something. There you go. Yeah. Watch it anywhere. 
That's true. Yeah. I think they've, they've just done a fantastic job with that Good. being online. I, they did it online a while back. They tried it through Meet On. I did it one year. I watched it one year because I was moving. Mm-hmm. And so it just, it was like 25% of the, the vibe. Experience, yeah. This year's uh, conference online in August or September was like, 75 to 80 percent of the buy like it felt really good and and yeah. got so much information out of it it encapsulated it encapsulated a lot uh and there was there was no fall off in um in the the way that they went about actually you know relaying the information um and and giving their speeches and um bringing the energy that they had while they were on stage you could still feel that yeah uh, the part I loved was like the craziness of, you know, 30 people in like Taiwan together behind, you know, Mark speaking and they're on the screen. Meanwhile, it's like 3 a.m. there and they're going buck wild and going crazy. And I was like, oh, my God, there's so many people uh, all over the world that are, you know, is changing their life and they're absolutely, you know, buck wild about it and yeah. once again we We're lost that a little bit yeah we lost that a little bit in february um of 2020 because that was when everything was kind of going on over there in um in asia and there was not nearly as much um you know travel. yeah travel so not Plus as much yeah. yeah yeah it was cool to have that back man no vegas that's tough <laughs> That's tough. You a gambler? No, I've just never been. I like traveling new places. Um, what what uh what do you, what do you, what do you think about next August? You think we'll finally be in person by that point? I mean, it's hard to tell, but I don't know. I said we'd be in person last August. <laughs> <laughs> Valid point. Valid point. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy I'm, how fast. I think in my in just my general like i never think anything's going to be as bad as it is or will be i'm just a pretty calm um, things just will will get by it'll be all right so never expected this to be what it is yeah. and i basically don't expect it'll be what it is coming up gotcha. like i just, yeah. just level heads prevail that's what i always say yeah thankfully there are some people that are a little more worried than me and they help, you know, do the right thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, that's what the joke always is. It's like me and you uh, in our rather monotone voices, right? And uh, <laughs> that's always the joke uh, with the team. We can we can have fun and, and spew out our comments, but we're not necessarily the loudest and most rambunctious uh, of the crew. Yeah. I know. <laughs> when's the last time um you guys kind of got together as a team at all have you seen michelle have you seen leah or as a team we just got together for a conference in september in september yep. yeah. some people came over to my house we when my mom my mom yep. came by yeah yeah and it was that was good and so we haven't done anything besides yeah. our weekly zooms where we you know get to see each other was okay. that uh, i kind of assumed that this monday didn't happen did it happen were you guys on there monday? this monday did um yeah this oh. monday did. i i know that sometimes it gets really hectic um and a lot of people like in between the, the midst of christmas and new year's um we don't usually do one so i yeah I kind of just assumed that sorry I ended up missing it i my son has hockey practice and i'm an assistant coach so mm-hmm. How do you like that? I love it. Yeah. And it's a nice benefit that right now because with COVID, no parents can come in. So mm. it, it was interesting with my daughter playing soccer, even outside, we weren't able to stay around the field. So she's playing on this new team and I have no clue if she's trying. I, I don't know she if the coach is being nice. Yeah. I don't know if me, I have nothing except we go to a game, she gets some playing time. Uh, you know, and that's it. And it's just really different because I'm used to 
at least being at half of her practices and watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. So when a game, I kind of understand what the game plan might be. Mm -hmm. um, and with hockey, I, I wasn't coaching before, but I was at every practice because it's only an hour. There's no sense in leaving. Yeah. Um, and so this year I just volunteered to help because, mm -hmm. you know, they always need parents to help. And uh, turns out he has some really good coaches. But with COVID happening, it worked out. Now I can be in the rink for every practice, every game. Cool. And, uh, so now you have the ability to still go watch your son, whereas if you weren't coaching, you would really wouldn't be able to right. yeah, be there. That's cool. That's nice. How, how old is he now? He's eight. He's eight. And she is? She's 12. 12, yeah. Wow, she's 12. Last time I saw her, she was probably eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Craziness. Uh, man. Is there a, I always like to pass the gavel um, at some point and see if there's any questions you have for, for me. What do you have going on? Like you, you're always, you always have something sort of up your sleeve that I don't know about until I <laughs> see you in Miami and you go, Hey, I've been doing this for a while or oh, I'm, I'm thinking about starting this tomorrow. <laughs> so what's that thing that I don't know about? Um, so, uh, from a, a business um, perspective, um, a, a couple different, you know, opportunities have, have come to the table with the podcast. Um, so I've been spending more time um, with, you know, the the idea of where I can take it more so, um, and what it can what it can do for um, me and how I can kind of provide more value to people who you know are supporting and listening and and looking for you know more knowledge and stuff like that. Um, so, <clears throat> with that being said, people have uh, a couple. People have reached out that I, you know, most of the time it's someone I know, um, you know, just conversing and the other ones are people that I reach out to and say, hey, you know, I, I would love to connect. I see everything you're doing. Let's, you know, hop on and chat. And then um, as of late, I've gotten much, uh, much more like incoming requests to be on the podcast, which is good. Um, so that's that's big. Um and that means it's subtly growing, which is what right. the, the goal obviously is. Um, but I always, in the back of my mind, I keep in mind that I don't want it to become something that I feel attached to, to the point where it becomes reluctantly doing podcasts just yeah, for the sake of doing them. Yeah. So um, I always try to keep that top of mind. Um, and that's why it's, it's, it's been a blessing so far. It's good. I don't have to worry about, you know, no one's making money from this. Um, I actually lose money doing the podcast uh, <laughs> because, because I'm paying someone to edit them and he's done an amazing job and uh, he does that for me. So I lose money making the, basically doing the podcast. Um, but a company also reached out to me um, similar to um, Audible. Uh, and they reached out and they basically, you know, they said, Hey, you you do a great job with your podcast. Uh, we'd like for you to create content for our app and our website. Um, and it's basically like a premium you pay per month. Um, and I would basically make like anywhere from like seven to 10 different, um, lessons, maybe 10 lessons on a specific subject. Um, and that way someone would be able to tune in and listen to it like a podcast, like a monologue um, and learn that way. Um, so that's cool. That's, that's something that's been happening. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently with a, uh, a client, um, we're doing a case study. Um, so uh, he's doing some, some things uh, with the doctor uh, that is, you know, um, obviously can't be spilled. Uh, but long story short, we're testing to see how he's improving. Um, and since I'm training him um, on a day to day, then I'm doing, you know, all the sorts of uh, tests from a strength standpoint, from a cardiovascular standpoint, um, and keeping track of that and being in contact with the doctor to give him those statistics 
So we're doing a case study on that. And um, the goal is for that to be published and for my name to be on that as well, which would be really cool. Wait. Um, and then outside of that lifestyle wise, I plan on downsizing from this room and apartment and um, I want to live uh, on the road in the RV life, um, which were you on the call that time we were talking about it? It sounds a little familiar, but maybe I'm just not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to pick a tiny house where you're going. <laughs> my mind was saying tiny house, tiny house. No. So um, I still want, I want to be more mobile um, for now. Uh, I think the, the benefit of the podcast, and this is what my envision mint has always been was that we have thousands of, you know, people in our network that are business owners with us, right? Um, 5,000 of them are health professionals like I am with Nutrimetrics. Um, so spread all across the country are opportunities for me to, you know, go meet up with individuals, learn from them and do podcasting with them and get content out there and all of that. Uh, so the idea is to be able to uh, travel, have the podcast be the main you know, thing that I'm, I'm working on and doing um, while I have income. Um, and the, the pandemic has really helped with people being comfortable doing virtual personal training. Yeah. So I have a number of people that I do virtual personal training with now as well. So now that um, allows me to travel and still have clients that provide a source of income for me. And then uh, with the business um, and our products and um, my customers, not just paying me for personal training services, but also paying me for, you know, their day-to-day -day health, uh, then that's been an option too. And then nutrition coaching can be done anytime, anywhere. So I have virtual personal training um, clients as well. So all of that adding up um, is finally the, the picture that I envisioned like three years ago. When I, I had a three year plan moving to Florida. So um, it's really starting to uh, turn into that single lane road, uh, which is cool. Awesome. I'm yeah. Just smirking over here because I'm picturing you outside, like with this beautiful background, mm -hmm. training someone that, you know, most people would think is just a, a background. Or a, yeah, yeah. you know or a fake video on their app but really it's dylan being wherever he wants when he's doing his training and maybe That's sometimes the it's a rest stop in alabama or <laughs> sometimes it's a beach yeah. uh you know somewhere I'll else be, so. i'll be in key west or la or you know who knows okay. um side of the highway oh i gotta pull over and do this <laughs> show over here so and here we are the beauty of it that's the beauty of it um and obviously that's not going to be a long-term, you know, it's not how I'm going to live my entire life, but I've, I've always been under the, um, you know, the umbrella of new England most of my life. That's why I wanted to move down to Florida and just put myself elsewhere to learn and grow. Um, and it's, it's been huge for me. And I think uh, the ability to travel even more will continue to elevate that growth. And then I, I've always, you know, I've only been out of the country once um, and went to Canada, Toronto, <laughs> which is pretty much New York city. So I really didn't, I really didn't leave the country. Um, although it's a way nicer city. It's beautiful there. Uh, it's clean. The people are great. Uh, and it doesn't have a New York city smell, but uh, it's so modernized. It's pretty much America. Uh, right. Um, so long story short, I want to travel to other places, but I, I don't want to do so with uh, a lack of appreciation for the United States and uh, everything that it has to offer. I mean, it's, yeah. it is uh, absurd the amount of like geographical diversity, cultural diversity that we have in the United States. And I've yet to really explore much of it. I've been to California once. Um, I've lived here. I lived in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and I've been to New Hampshire, Maine, Connecticut, New Jersey, uh, and DC. And that's yeah. pretty much it. So, yeah. And I've definitely learned even just in our country, the diversity is not quite the same as it is, even in Toronto. Toronto yeah. 
hugely diverse. And it, sure. for someone who's grown up in New England, yeah. thought, thought I knew diverse, kept myself diverse or whatever, you know, I yeah. just, it was eye opening how no. it isn't. Here. I know it's not, not, not even remotely uh, close. And down here is absurdly diverse as well. Um, but in its own right, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of uh, Caribbean, right? That's, yeah. that's where a lot of the diversity comes from. Um, whereas if you go to the West Coast, you'll see a lot of um, Central America, right? right. It makes sense. Uh, so um, just being able to, to learn and, and, and grow and travel. So the nice. RV, the RV life, uh, I've been looking, I almost bought one a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was there for two hours looking at it with the guy. It had water damage. I decided to not take the chance um, having to redo panels and end yeah, up yeah. being a huge headache and worse than I, you know, every, everything else was checked off the list except the, the water damage. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. Then we can all we can all stay in your RV at the next convention. <laughs> well, that's that was the next thing I was gonna say is uh, whenever we we do end up going live events again, I uh, I can just meet you guys wherever. I'll <laughs> I'll sleep outside in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Which you've probably done that before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know I've slept on the floor. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't think I made it outside though. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Listen, I I, uh, I, I do want to, you know, thank you. It's it, a lot of where my mind has gone um, in the last six years has been a huge part to you. So I appreciate that. I learned a ton from you, too. Yeah. Did you get your book back, by the way? I, I ended up saying, yeah. yes. Did yes, I did. Cool. Right. I forgot you had it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. When, when, when you only read like three, four pages a night, it takes a while to read books, you know? Yeah, I, two, <laughs> two pages and I'm done. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so, with you. Uh, I have a, a long list, but every year I try to read at least like five books. Um, and that, that puts me on the realm of like, it takes me two months to three months to read a book. So maybe what you, you can start doing is listening to books instead of reading. That's yeah. what I've done, mm -hmm. doing the dishes, you know you know, either listening to our audios or listening to a book because they yeah, just getting through two pages a night just doesn't get you there. No, <laughs> it's more of a, the activity um, of, of, you know, helping fall asleep and just learning a little bit and being, you know, stimulated in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I do listen to a lot of podcasts, our audios, um, not as much recently. I definitely have to uh, improve my consistency with that. And then, um, one thing I've always thought about is like, they could easily, uh, they could easily make a podcast for us in a sense, right? Like, yeah. And that's kind of where, you know, this whole idea is coming from of me like traveling and talking to all the different business owners and across the country. Imagine I go to, imagine if I go to Flushing, like how crazy <laughs> that podcast would be. <laughs> <laughs> go to uh go to philly right yep. um so i'm gonna reach out to some of that team and some of those higher ups as well uh the philly team especially um because i i you know i already have some connections there brandon and yep. uh, other people so um i would love to have them on the podcast that'd be super cool just talk about the opportunities sure. and everything but i can't think of any other things up my sleeve that's about it. I think so. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, of course, again, for your time and uh, for everything uh, for the last six years. Cheers to many more. I'm Great. sad I won't see you in Vegas. I know. I know. We'll, we'll have to find a way. Um, with that, also, I might be able to come up and travel um, to Rhode Island and uh, maybe see you guys. Yeah, if you want to come see Rhode Island again, you can come watch with us. Some, you know, we'll probably well, do a watch party. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I want to go. I want to go snowboarding too. So I want to link that into. Uh, there you go. Yeah. It's a good weekend. We usually get a blizzard when whenever we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hopefully the timing works out well. Yeah. You can 
you can do the math and figure that out, right? Uh, I used to be able to. <laughs> I <laughs> called weather.com. <laughs> yeah. Smart man, smart man. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Brian, uh, thank you uh, for everyone listening. You know, um, thank you for listening, of course. Uh, reach out to Brian if you have questions, you want to learn more, if you want to uh, sit down with us and chat it up. Uh, we can absolutely do that. Talk about um, opportunities, see if you're uh, qualified to uh, maybe work alongside us and with us and with the team and get some support. That'd be really cool. So uh, until next time, uh, I am, we are, life is limitless. Adios, guys. What's up, LT Tribe? DFOS here. Just to express my gratitude and say thank you for tuning in and continuously commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing to the episodes and the content that we are bringing you. It is helping so, so much. Once again, I want to say thank you and hope you have a great rest of your day. These times are, there's one thing that we can count on to keep us connected, and that is the one and only video conferencing platform, Zoom. Zoom is an amazing platform. It's the very platform that I use to record the visual portion of the LT360 podcast. I also used it today to share a business plan and stay connected with someone that wanted to learn more about products and services that we offer. And I also used it to train a virtual personal training client this morning it is virtually simplistic very simplistic anybody can use it and we just scored an amazing amazing deal as unfranchise owners you can get the 160 dollars valued membership through zoom for just 9.99 per month instead of paying $160 per month for unlimited recording access and storage and tons of other features, you can pay $9.99 per month and save nearly $1,800 per month. You best believe it. I signed up. I created and transferred my account over to this pro account and I will not be looking back because that $9.99 per month that I'm paying also comes with a residual 15% IBV commissions. Each and every month that I pay out $9.99, I'm getting 15% commissions on that in the form of IBV. And I cannot think of an easier and better way to stay connected with my team and help my team get paid. So make sure you head over to your back office, go to my account, go to my services, and look up Zoom video conferencing. You will not be disappointed. Let's all use Zoom to help us stay connected and get financially fit together. What's up, Luminous Theory Tribe? Hope you enjoyed the episode. I wanted to take a second to shout out a childhood neighbor of mine, Victor Rosa. He just started a new podcast. Would love for you guys to go support. It's called Real Recognize Real. Just two dudes who love movies, all right? They are going to watch all the movies they can so they can give you quick and insightful reviews on them. These guys have education backing these reviews they're not just throwing out random opinions once again they're going to see the movies so that you don't have to so go check them out real recognize real peace defoss here i know y'all understand how much of a nutrition freak i am and when i heard the world's most nutrient dense food you know i had to tune in listen and get learned so I need y'all to check out the LT360 podcast I did with Catherine Arnston, the founder of Energy Bits, an algae-based nutrition company. It is not a supplement. It is a one-ingredient superfood, and it is recognized as the most nutrient-dense food on the planet by the World Health Organization and others. So... Go check out energybits.com and make sure to use the discount code Limitless Theory at checkout for 20% off. You will not be disappointed because you will have the most nutrient dense food in your pantry in the world. Go check it out now. Peace.
Defoss here to tell you about my new favorite kitchen appliance. And no, it is not a pan or even a utensil, but instead it is my new pure H2O water filter. It sits behind my kitchen sink. It removes up to 97% of chlorine from my tap water and 77 other contaminants. We know that our bodies are made up of 72% water and there is a strong connection between the quality of the water that we intake and the quality and longevity of our life. So we have to make sure it is the cleanest and purest water we can get. With Pure H2O, I know that every time I turn my sink on, I'm getting the best and cleanest water possible. So if you want to learn more, head over to thelimitlesstheory.com slash shop and you can learn more about Pure H2O. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Adios.